So you're sick of five minute flight times and you're ready to get into long range FPV? Well, this video may be for you. Lithium ion batteries have a high energy density, meaning they have a large capacity with a lower weight. A LiPo the same size will be about 40% heavier than the lithium ion. LiPos make up for this with high discharge rates, which is great for extreme freestyle and racing. However, if you're cruising and just doing a little bit of freestyle, lithium ion will be great. Before starting the build, make sure you do your homework and you know everything about these batteries because they can be extremely dangerous. Do not overcharge or discharge them. Don't short circuit them. And there's many other things you need to know. Here, I'm showing you what a short circuit looks like. If this happens in your battery pack and you don't see, it can build up heat and lithium ion batteries are flammable. And this could and have before burned houses down. So proceed at your own risk, but here we go. First thing you got to do is source your cells. You want to get them from an authentic source like 18650 battery store. Do not go to Amazon or eBay. Half time you won't get um, legit cells. Anyway, you can choose from two different sizes and you're going to be looking at the amp rating, which will usually be in the title. You want at least 20 amps or higher, the more the better. These ones right here, these Molly cells are really good value for the money with high capacity, high discharge rating. If you have five inch quad and under, you might wanna go with 18650s because they're a bit smaller, but it is harder to find higher amp ratings. And like I said, shoot for a, at least 20 amps, and you should be good. We'll use sandpaper to roughen the ends, which will help with the soldering. You want a high powered soldering iron, which I use a different one actually, some good solder. Want some flux for sure. Here's some wire, I use 14 gauge, which should be plenty, a connector, balance leads, have something to cut and strip the wires with. These insulators you can use, I actually didn't use them this time, captain tape, electrical tape, and a glue gun, and you should be set to go. Here I'm gonna show you the wiring that's needed. I'm gonna show a bunch of different examples because when I was learning, this is something I was really confused at. So I'm gonna simply and quickly show you how you would connect up different packs. Starting out with a 2S pack, we're just gonna do one simple connection, negative side to a positive side, and then connect the positive and negative lead. And that's all you need to do. I'm cutting out these wires right here to show the connections. You just connect these up like so, and you'd have a 2S battery. Now we're gonna add a third cell. Once you start getting more and more cells, what I like to do is follow the flow of electricity from the battery lead connector. We'll start on the positive end there, go to the negative, and then the positive of the next cell, go down to the negative of that cell, and then the positive will be connected. What you have left is the negative, and boom. Add another cell to make a 4S. We're going to start on wherever the positive is again. Go down to the negative end of the cell and connect it to the next positive. Go down, do the same thing. Go down, do the same thing. You'll always be connecting a negative and a positive. You should be left like that. And there you go. Always double check your connections because you should be connecting negative to positive every single time and it should never loop. Since most of the time you're gonna be using this vertical orientation, I'll show you that as well. It's the same thing, it just looks different. Start with the positive, go down the cell, you'll connect on that side, come back up and connect negative and positive. Gonna flow down the cell and across. Yep. And then both your connections will be at the top there for the battery lead. Real quick, I'll show you a 6S battery, but it's the same thing, this will be pretty repetitive. You got your positive connector. You're gonna go down the battery to the next one. Connect, go up, connect negative to positive. Travel down and across. We'll connect the bottom side there, back up, across, down that battery. Connection at the bottom, you should be left with a negative, which is for the battery lead. And there you go. Master this and you can build any size battery you need. Now time for the balance lead connectors. You'll have a positive one as the first one you start at, which goes to the positive battery connector. To the first group, 
You just follow that energy again, connect to it, and then you'll connect to the negative lead. Now with the 4S, a little more um, tricky, but same thing. Positive will go with the positive lead. You go to the first group, second group, third group, and negative lead. And that is it. I'll just go through it one more time numbering them. But the general idea is you start with the red lead. That'll be the first one. Then you go through all the groups and then to the negative lead. I'm gonna check my batteries next. The cells must be the same voltage. So the first two are the same. Last one is a little off. Normally you won't have to worry about this. The only reason mine was off is because I was messing with them beforehand, but now they're the same. Now we're just gonna sand the ends. This will really help the solder make a connection quicker. With the soldering, the whole point is you wanna go pretty hot and you don't wanna hold it onto the ends very long or you'll damage the cells. Now I'm gonna glue them together, just a couple dabs to save on weight, just enough to keep it together. Go around all corners and put a little dab of glue on the top and bottom. I'll show you here what it looks like. Just like that should do. One thing I forgot to mention earlier is that you really shouldn't be soldering these batteries together. It isn't recommended by the manufacturer and the reason is the heat can damage the cells. However, many people do it this way and it ends up working out fine. The trick is to use a soldering iron that is really hot. The one on the left is a pine cell. It's underpowered for this kind of thing. It works better for small electronics. However, the soldering station on the right, which I'm showing you just heats up really fast, has a lot of power. That's something that'll work a lot better. I found 400 degrees Celsius works well for me where it's not burning the solder, but it's also connecting to the metal pretty quick. I'm using one of the biggest tips that the soldering iron comes with, and that's what you're gonna want so it can transfer heat quickly and efficiently and not heat the whole battery up. Now that you've sanded it, it's been roughened up so that they're gonna connect better. Time to add the flux. I only add a little bit of flux in the center because you don't want the solder to spread and go off that on the positive terminal. There's little edges that it could drip off of. I don't want it dripping down there. So I just wanna make sure it stays on the area that I'm going to. I'm gonna put a big glob on my soldering iron and then connect it here to the positive terminal. We're trying to work as quickly as we can. I'll add a little more as we go. I think I was on this cell a little too long to be honest. Um, but yeah, three to five seconds, the quicker the better, but you want to make sure there's a good connection to the middle as well. One thing that I've found that really helps me, it's like I said, 400 degrees Celsius. I'm going to put a ton on the tip beforehand. That way I don't have to add, worry about adding it in as I go or adding as much. And then we're just going to go through um, and add a little glob to each end. You really don't need too much to get a good connection. I'll go ahead and flip around, do the same on the other side. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab the pre-cut 14 gauge wire, strip the ends off and tin them. It helps a ton having these helping hands here. That was $5 from Harbor Freight. And I like to glob the solder on there good. That way when you go to connect, you don't have to add more solder. I measure out and cut my battery leads here. I cut one shorter than the other so they end up coming out on one side of the cell rather than the middle. This just makes it smoother um, in the end. When putting these joints together, don't be afraid to put a good amount of solder on the soldering iron. That'll help transfer the heat smoothly. Just a couple seconds and you have a great joint. We're gonna follow the flow of energy here for our next connection. It's all ready to go. Doing the same thing for all the joints to connect them. Just a couple seconds and you'll have a good joint. Again, following the flow of energy to find where my next connection will be. Flip the battery around to the backside. There's only one place you can connect it to, so pretty hard to mess it up. Lastly, you should just have a an open negative terminal, connect the negative lead, and there you have it. You have a working battery. I'll use my multimeter here to make sure I have the correct voltage and it looks good. Now it's time for the balance lead wires. We'll start with the red wire, which will go to the positive lead terminal. 
We'll just connect it in the same spot. I'll pre-tin it just like all my other wires. And then to connect it, we don't want to get it too hot that it'll unsolder what we've already done. Just enough to suck in that one little wire. Just like that. We'll move to the next black wire, the one that's closest to the red one. And it needs to follow the flow of energy. So we'll just thread it through the center here. And it's going to go to the first group. It can go on either side. Just needs to be connected to one end of the red wire there. So I connected it to one side, just like so. We'll go to the third black wire, cut it to size, and solder it onto the last group. And you, again, you go either side here. Lastly, you'll connect the last wire to the negative lead. I was having a bit of trouble here and I actually almost got it too hot to where the negative wire would come off, but it didn't and it ended up working out just fine. To check your wiring, you can use your multimeter. Start at the top there with the positive lead and go down. It should add voltage every time, which it does, showing that I have the correct voltage for every group. A secondary check is you could use a balance charger. Simply just hook it up. If you've done anything wrong, it'll probably beep at you. Um, I just go to charge it, make sure it's on the lithium ion mode, and it'll show me the voltage of each cell group right here and they're all the same they all look good battery is all wired up and good to go simply just need to cover it up what i like to do is use a little bit of electrical tape to kind of organize the wires we're going to use the captain tape to protect the ends i'll simply just tape a little bit over all the connections and then I'll actually go over that with electrical tape on the ends. I'll show you here. This helps to protect the ends and uh, protect your battery from shorts. One thing I didn't do on this battery, but you can do as an extra precaution is put some kind of foam padding layer. That way, if you crash, um, you're less likely to break any of the connections off. But yeah, the idea here is just to protect the ends, bun it up, make it look nice. I was happy with how this one turned out here. Going to go ahead and put a little shrink wrap on. Trying something new where I only put it on the center, leave the black ends. You can use your heat gun, hair dryer to slowly add heat. And I really liked how this one turned out with the black ends. Now it's just time to charge it up and go fly.